Ms. Damoff, thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. So I definitely uh, want to talk about the handgun ban, but I, I do need to begin with the Mass Casualty Commission, which I'm sure you understand, because yesterday the commission in Nova Scotia released audio recordings of conversations between the RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky and officers in the province who were really investigating the worst mass shooting in this country's history. Now, as you know, she expressed frustration that those officers did not include the kind of weapon used in the killings and in the recording, Commissioner Lucky says she had talked to the minister and would be speaking with the prime minister about the absence of that information. Was she talking about Bill Blair, the former public safety minister? Well, I, I, the commissioner appeared at the public safety committee not that long ago, as did Minister Blair, and both have denied any uh, kind of interference in the uh, in the investigation or in the release of, of handguns. Uh, commissioner Lucky was quite clear when she appeared. And so I, I think I'll just leave it with what she said. Uh, we don't as a government interfere with police operations. And commissioner was, the commissioner was quite clear that she was not, did not feel that there was any pressure whatsoever from the minister's office. Except in the recording, and as quoted by the, the Conservative House Leader Andrew Scheer today, uh, she is quoted and recorded as saying that she was uh, answering to the minister, explaining the frustration with the, the minister, directed by the minister. And now we have Andrew Scheer calling on Bill Blair, the current Minister for Emergency Preparedness, to resign or at the very least have the House investigate him for misleading members in the House by saying that neither the PMO nor his office interfered with the operations. Well, I, I mean, first, let me let me just acknowledge and, and extend sympathy to the families in Nova Scotia. If, if we remember at the time, this was this was just a horrific, horrific shooting. And absolutely, the prime minister and the minister of public safety uh, would need to be involved in getting updates from the commissioner. This was this was a, an, an incredible tragedy. So it's not the least bit unusual for the commissioner to speak with uh, the minister of public safety to give him updates on what was happening on the ground in Nova Scotia. That's not at all unusual. Except, but there again. certainly was no direction. Um, Minister Blair and the commissioner have said there was no direction given to her. Um, there was no political interference whatsoever. Well, except, and again, going to the recording, we hear Commissioner Lucky say that this goes to legislation that your government is trying to pass that would eventually or uh, protect officers on the ground like the RCMP. So if that's not connecting the dots in the recording, Despite what is said uh, outside of that recording, how does not that not uh, show that there was some type of government interference here? Well, I bet the commissioner would know that the government was working on legislation because the commissioner would have been involved in, in advising the government on uh, that type of legislation. And not only that, she acknowledged that the legislation would be uh, helpful in in. Um, protecting police officers. So, I, I mean, to think that the commissioner was not aware of what was coming forward with regards to firearms, I mean, you know, the chief fire, the, the RCMP are the the, uh, the people in the government who are enforcing uh, through the chief firearms officer the legislation we bring in. So she would certainly be aware of, of what we, it was in our platform. Uh, we ran on introducing this. So it was no secret that we were going to be bringing forward legislation when it came to firearms. That wasn't, that wasn't confidential in any way, shape or form. It was, it was part of the platform we ran on. But to be clear, the, the, the assertion here and the concern here, at least as expressed by Andrew Shear today, is that Bill Blair misled members of the House by saying that his ministry, he, his government did not direct in any way any part of the, the operations, including communications. And one simple way to clarify that is to answer one call that we have from Mr. Shear to release more information to the House and let the House determine whether or not they were misled by the former uh, minister, uh, current minister of emergency preparedness. Do you think that might be a step of clarifying this? Well, I, to, I'll be honest with you, I haven't heard, I haven't seen what Mr. Shear put before the House, but it's before the House and we'll let that process proceed as it will. Okay. Now, of course, this happens as your government's ban on handguns uh, goes into effect today, a ban which, uh, going back to the Conservatives, they say and others along with them that it does not solve the issue because criminals do not register their firearms in the first place. So how does this ban 
help bring down the level of crime? Well, I think it's important to recognize that gun violence is just is not solely uh, people who are dying in crime. And we had the, the heard from the doctors for protection from guns who talk about people being five times more likely to die if there's uh, a firearm in the home. So whether that's by suicide, whether it's gender-based violence, we know that the more guns that are out there, the more likely people are to die. So I am incredibly proud of the fact that the handgun freeze has gone into effect today. And, and I was in Toronto uh, with uh, Minister Ian, as, along with the Danforth families, Mothers for Peace and, and the doctors uh, for protection from guns who are all supportive and who all recognize that this is one tool in keeping Canadians safe. One tool, and there is a bigger package coming down the pipe. So what is the next step? Well, it's not that it's coming down the pipe, we're doing it. So we're investing in communities through the Building Safers Communities Fund and through other investments we've made on anti-gang, uh, you know, helping youth make the right choices and supporting community organizations who are doing good work across the country. Um, we're also making investments in the border to stop gun smuggling. Bill C-21 includes increased um, penalties for gun smuggling. It also includes red flag provisions that will make it easier for um, most you, most often women, but also those who may be concerned about uh, someone at risk of suicide for getting guns out of the home. Ms. Damoff, thank you for this. Really appreciate the time today. You're welcome. Thank you.